Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Nick, and this is Sam. We're both on staff here at St. Alphonsus Liguri Church, and we're, we're just really glad that you joined us here online, uh, especially as we're uh, celebrating the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Father's Day weekend. We're just really excited about that today. Yeah, one other thing that's kind of been a big deal for us is that this is our re-entry weekend, the first weekend that we've been able to hold the public celebration of Mass at our church again with a couple different restrictions and it's going to look a little bit different. Um, obviously we're still going to be providing online Mass because with our reduced church capacity we want to make sure everyone still has the opportunity to enjoy the Lord's Day and celebrate with us. Um, however, the streaming of our daily Masses will no longer take place, at least for the time being, uh, until maybe some things change, I don't know. Um, but also, we, with the reopening of things, there's a lot of different uh, roles and volunteerism that goes into making that happen smoothly uh, each and every single day. Uh, so if you're interested in potentially donating some of your time and your talents towards that, we encourage you to check out our website, stalfonsisnet slash reentry, and to check out the volunteer opportunities there, as well as how to register for Mass, all the different precautions that have been put in place. It's the best place to find all of the information that you need. Now, when does uh, the registration for the following Sunday happen, Sam? That's a great question. So every Tuesday, the registration for the following weekend will go live, and then throughout the week, Bill, those spots will fill up pretty quickly yeah. because our seats are limited. So make sure to yeah, get they are limited. So you want to get on that, and uh, we can't wait to, to see you. Now it is Father's Day weekend, and so we just want to give a shout out to dads everywhere um, on this weekend. And so just stay tuned uh, to the end of Mass for a special little video clip for you. So uh, we hope you enjoy that. So well, we'll. With all that said, we, let's uh, begin in worship. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. Now, early sun with golden beams. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, from our online campus, those of you tuning in to this celebration of Mass. It is the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. To prepare our hearts to celebrate this Mass worthily and well, let us call to mind our sin and ask of God's mercy and pardon. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundations of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah cried out, I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. Lord, Lord in, in your steadfast, steadfast love, answer me. me. It is for your sake that I have borne reproach, that shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. 
It is zeal for your house that has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Lord, Lord, in in your your steadfast steadfast love, love, answer me. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. At an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. With your steadfast help, rescue me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Lord, Lord, in in your your steadfast steadfast love, love, answer answer me. Let the oppressed see it and be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own that are in bonds. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them. Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, just as sin came into the world through one man and death came through sin, so death spread to all people because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift and the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of truth will testify on my behalf says the Lord and you also are to testify be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint matthew glory Glory to you you, O lord Lord. jesus said to his apostles fear no one for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known what i say to you in the dark tell in the light and what you hear whispered proclaim from the housetops do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before humans I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before humans, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever been blindsided? I know that recently when the province announced that our church could open at 30% capacity, I certainly was. My head instantly was swirling about how we're going to make this work and nervousness at what it's going to be like to preach in front of people again, you know, especially after my little online stardom. And of course, a great deal of excitement is also added to that mix too of how awesome it will be 
to see familiar faces again and, and maybe even some new ones too. Needless to say, I have not slept well for the last few days. Still, I think this, at least for me, has been an overall more pleasant experience of the unexpected. Because here we are at church again, even though it looks a lot different from the last time that we were here. But I couldn't be happier. But life oftentimes dishes out less positive, unexpected news. Like maybe you just get laid off from a job that you thought was going really well. Or you find out your child's been getting into all sorts of trouble at school for quite some time with some friends, and you never even expected it. Maybe you hear a nasty rumor that's been spread about you, and you have no idea when or how it started. And it just blindsides you. You never see this stuff coming, and to a degree, it just comes with the territory of what it is to be alive. There's no crystal ball that will tell you everything that's about to happen. You don't even get a heads up before a diagnosis or a phone call before the accident. In short, expect the unexpected is inevitable and it's absolutely outside of our control. All we can control is how we react to it. And that's where God's grace comes in. His grace is ever new and ever present and, and always being poured out upon us. That is, if we're willing to receive it. And that's what our new series for a new season is all about. We're calling it Open-Handed, How to Receive All That God Has for You. We're kicking off this series this week by speaking about receiving light. Many times throughout the Bible, God is compared to, in fact, he even compares himself to light. For instance, we hear Jesus say, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But as much as this is the truth, it doesn't always feel like it, does it? A lot of the time, it can feel like we're just taking shots in the dark, hoping for the best. And that can be quite scary. As the province gradually reopens, it can feel like we're still in the dark about so much. It has caused so many of us at different points to feel anxious about the future and even afraid to leave our own houses. I know that as I called many of you, you shared this with me, the fear that you have of even leaving your own home. But God proposes a better way of going about life. In following him, he says that we will have light instead of darkness. But how do we live in that light? How do we receive the light that, that will illuminate our world and see us through these dark times of our lives? Well, we're going to dive right into the gospel reading today to help us unpack this. We are now in the 10th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel. And it is in this chapter that Jesus is preparing his 12 disciples to go out on mission for a while. They will be visiting various cities and towns, proclaiming the good news and performing miracles. Naturally, Jesus gives them a lot of really great instruction on how to conduct themselves when they step out into the unknown. He says, what I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Jesus has been teaching his own disciples all the time. He has been illuminating their minds and enlightening their very hearts. And now he's saying they need to share what they have heard from God with others. You see, receiving light is actually a lot more simple to do than we give it credit for. Just think about the moon. Now, we know that the moon, especially when it's full, can brighten up the night and outshine all the stars. But none of that light is its own. The moon doesn't have to generate a single particle of its own light to shine brightly. Instead, it only reflects the brightness of the sun. The moon takes what the sun gives it 
and reflects it back to the world. And through that, the darkness of night is not so dark anymore. Friends, you and I are meant to do exactly the same thing when it comes to the Christian life. We don't have any light or grace of our own to give to others. Heck, we seldomly have enough of it, all, of it for ourselves. But if we can receive the light of Jesus and then reflect that light into the lives of the people around us, then we can truly be a channel of that light for the rest of the world. The world, my friends, desperately needs that light. How dark a time we seem to be caught up in right now. So here's a simple step for reflecting light into this world. Fill yourselves with God's light. Fill yourselves with God's light. You can't reflect what you're not receiving. So we must first receive God's light before we can be light to others. There are many ways that God's light can bring that light into our lives. And we need to tear back the, the dusty curtains that block us from them. So firstly, there is scripture. That's the word of God. We spoke a lot about this in the last message series we just finished up. But God's word can really illuminate our minds and our hearts. Having an enlightened mind naturally leads to living a more light-filled life. Then there's the good counsel that we can receive from other people. If you can bring to mind a Christian you admire, a joyful and, and a wise person who feels like a light in your life, well then gravitate towards that person. Learn from them, and you can get some of that light for yourself. Then there's service. Service, simply put, is the practice of sharing light. And it's through practice that you can reflect a stronger and brighter light over time. Service can look like a lot of things, like offering to pray for a friend who's going through a tough time, maybe giving to that homeless person you encounter that is in need, or volunteering right here at church in some capacity. Maybe even telling a secular friend about Jesus and inviting them to join you for Mass right here in our physical campus or online. The truth is, if you are a Christian, you were not made to dwell in darkness. Jesus says this, Fear no one, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. When we are receiving God's light, fear melts away, because fear grows in the places that are dark, namely those parts of our lives that we cover up and hide and try not to let God into. But you, you and I, we were not made for darkness. We were made to receive the light so that we can be the light. You were made to be light. Just see what Jesus says earlier in St. Matthew's Gospel. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. Friends, you are the light of the world, and you are meant to shine, to illuminate what lies and ignorance have clouded over, to brighten what shame and sin have cast shadows upon, to light up what grief and pain have darkened. You are meant to be light. Let us not be afraid of the light that we have been given, for we have received this light not to expose or to humiliate, and not even to hoard to ourselves. Your light is meant to brighten a world that is dark, a world that desperately needs to be lit up. May God bless you all. And let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of life everlasting. Amen. Let us ask God for what we need this day and this week as we present to him our petitions. For all who believe in Christ, that God's loving favor will be theirs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of all nations, that God's infinite mercy will be theirs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our health care, essential frontline workers, spiritual and government leaders as they deal with the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer, especially for Barb and those of our parish, that God's abundant kindness will be theirs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that God's everlasting love will be theirs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all petitions left in the silence of our hearts. And those who ask for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, with the prophet Jeremiah, we entrust our lives into your hands. With Jesus, your son, we place our trust in your care for us. Let your grace overflow for us and for all people in answer to these prayers. For we offer them in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. During this time of pandemic, your gift is what allows uh, our ministry to run and to be able to do all the things that we're able to do. So if you would like to, to make a gift, to make an offering, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. So the first thing you can do is you can visit our website at stalfonsis.net slash give, and you can give that way. Just follow the instructions. Or if you prefer envelopes and you use those, you can always, uh, if you're safe and able to do so, uh, you can drop those off uh, at our office door. There's a mail slot. You can just slip it in there and you can give your gift that way. And as always, thank you so much uh, for giving during this time and in advance for your generosity. We just thank you so, so much. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you for the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make an offering of heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Oh, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death O Lord, until you come again O Lord, until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Alphonsus Liguri, St. Michael the Archangel, St. Jerome, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Don't Ecce agnus Dei, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the wicked enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. You have been faithful to a thousand generations Slow to anger, swift to bless Your hand has guided us through every situation Your loving kindness hasn't failed us yet God, you are my God You are my God I will live to sing your praises God, joy of my heart You are my rock You've been faithful through the ages The day will come when every eye on earth will see Perfect in your wisdom and your justice. Oh, how we long to see that glorious day. God, you are my God. You are my God. I will live to sing your praises. God, joy of my heart. You are. See?